Hi, it's Ed Johnawak on behalf of TEC, and we're going to talk a little bit about sizing a return grill today. Sizing a return grill is something that we need to pay attention to simply for the fact that we don't want noise that's not necessary in the home. The idea of turning a TV up when a system comes on has been sort of accepted in modern culture and that's horrible shouldn't be that way shouldn't sound like the, the martians are landing in your backyard and we all know that noise that comes from a return grill it's too small it's a simple idea that if we move the air at too high of a velocity across the grill it, it's going to hum and i uh, I'm sorry, why do return grills hum? Because they don't know the words. Uh, again, my apologies. I just can't talk about return grills without doing that. My daughter is somewhere upstairs rolling her eyes, even though she didn't hear me say it. I know she is. All right. So we're going to do something so that we can size a return grill properly. One of the reasons, or the biggest reason, I guess you could say, that I brought this topic up today was simply the fact that if you're doing any kind of duct leakage testing, you're using a duct blaster or duct tester to estimate airflow, ooh, excuse me, measure airflow, because that's what we're doing with one of those guys, you're in one way or another around these filter grills on a regular basis. So why not? Even if it isn't the focus of what you do, wouldn't it be nice if you understood the, the math behind making sure that they are the correct size? And that's what we're going to do. Uh, nothing you, really wrong with using rules of thumb when it comes to sizing return grills if we're doing it based off of some you know good math. And sometimes people use rules of thumb that aren't based off of good math. And as that last... Uh, a bullet point there says you know that can be problematic and we want to avoid that if possible the specific guidance in manual d for the velocity moving across a return grill and let me see crap oh i'm going to keep going and learn how to edit this stuff all right the the guidance in manual D for our velocity, uh, pretty short and sweet. If it's a regular return grill, uh, residential return grill, and you can identify the difference, well, in the engineering uh, information, the commercial grills, you can move the air at a greater velocity because the bars are further apart and more stout. In a stamped metal return grill, we have to be more cognizant of keeping that velocity below 500 feet per minute that's that's our number for a filter grill it's 300 feet per minute to my knowledge the only mention of velocity across the filter in manual d is about a filter grill uh, we account for the pressure drop of a filter during the friction rate worksheet process or to determining um, our critical path and that's a class for another day. Whenever I see the CFM is equal to area times velocity formula, it's kind of like seeing an old friend. A lot of good can come of that formula. We're manipulating in it to solve for other things. And I have found that it's, well, it's handy. The topic of selecting a filter grill relies on the second two formulas on the page. Whereas there's times we're trying to figure out if we have enough area and or if we're exceeding the velocity that we're trying to stay under. This is the slide that we're going to bring the pain. <laughs> I don't know even know if it's pain, but this is the one that contains all the math. The rule of thumb that we're going to talk about first is, well... How about let's find out if it's a solid one or not. This is one that I'm familiar with. It's been around for a long time. In fact, it's listed in the Hart and Cooley, I believe it is, uh, engineering information. And we're going to walk through uh, an example 
to see if it's solid advice or not. Based on a, a random 1,000 CFM example, because it's two square inches per CFM, we're going to double that number. And I don't deal in square inches. I deal in square feet because the formulas down here that have area in them are in square feet. You can see that we brought a multiplier into the, the mix, and it comes directly from this shot out of a grill manufacturer's information. It shows an AK factor, and that's the free area. And I'm not going to go through the math step by step here, but I am just going to point out that we determined the amount of free area, or 64.5%. I think that's a number, uh, or 0.645 uh, as our decimal, represents the free area from the 2.58 AK number down here. It's a 24 by 24 grill. Well, 24 by 24 should, not should, will mathematically solve for 4 feet. So if it's 4 feet, but some of it's getting blocked, and the amount that's getting blocked uh, is substantial. So we end up with 0.645 as free area or rounded off two and a half feet in a four foot square foot grill. So are we going to need one or two filter grills if we're trying to move a thousand CFM through it? And again, there's no reason behind me picking a 24 by 24. I just happened to pick that nice, easy round numbers to work with. If we tried to use one filter grill with our uh, roughly two and a half feet of free area, we would, using the thousand divided by 2.58, which if we come down here, let's we're trying to solve for our velocity, so we can see down here that our CFM divided by our area solves for velocity. Our velocity would be 387. Now, in the grand scheme of things, is that horrible? No, but it exceeds the 300 feet per minute number. So we're doing the math. Why would we want to knowingly exceed or break the rules? So I guess you figured out I'm a rule follower. So I want to follow the rules. So if for whatever reason, uh, that's the only size I have available to me, I'm going to put two of them in. Then I'm going to have a nice low velocity, right? I'm going to be just under 200 feet per minute. Our total square foot of free area for grill was five feet over here it's not double but it's almost one and a half times the free area that you end up with from the two uh, square inch per cfm rule how conservative is their rule of thumb i'm going to say it's pretty conservative and i like that uh, i didn't do the math but i'm going to guess and i'm going to say they're probably coming out somewhere around 150 feet per minute that's going to give the the occupant some fantastic filtration and um, i'll applaud whoever put that in print in their uh, engineering information okay we did the the heavy lifting on the last one with talking about a filter grill this one's uh, much more simple a regular return grill manufacturers will publish information that tells us what the free area is just like they will on a filter grill we're using 24 by 24 again i, I don't know why i picked it i just did i randomly picked something off of some uh, some information so the 24 by 24 grill instead of it being a filter grill has an ak or a free area of 3.1 square feet four square foot grill right still 24 by 24 the free area is 77%. We're going to take our 1,000 CFM and we're going to divide it by the amount of free area we have. Because if you look down here, our 1,000 CFM uh, divided by our area, which that's what we've, we have, solves for velocity. So we know that the velocity moving across that return grill is 331. And that's well under our 500 feet per minute limit. Moral of the story, look this stuff up. If you look this stuff up, 
you'll know that you have enough area or enough grill area so that we stay under the 500 number for a return grill and 300 feet per minute for our filter grills. I've used this slide for a very long time and I'm going to go through it and you'll understand why. So this is for a job that needed uh, a pretty substantial amount of airflow. I want to say it was designed at 1400 CFM. And I go through an explanation where I show you uh, why are we going with 25 by 25 instead of 30 by 30 or why aren't we – which one are we going to pick? Because we do the math, the velocity is equal to CFM divided by area. When we go through the math, the square inches is, is turned into square feet by dividing by 144. We end up with a velocity of 322, which for a filter grill is no good. I mean, is it close? Sure. Uh, but in the design stage, why would we do something other than what is correct? And a lower velocity across every filter is going to be superior. Do the math again, and you can see where we added a multiplier into the, the, the math. This number would have even been larger. I think it comes out over 400 if I put a multiplier in there. The multiplier I'm talking about here is the free area. We used the AK factor in the earlier slides. Uh, for a long time, and I would say for a very long time, I size stuff based off of uh, a 80% free area instead of actually looking up the a AK factor or the K factor some manufacturers publish. And we see that it's five square feet, and we do some more math, and my velocity is okay. So I would say, wow, this is a really good job. This is going to do everything that I wanted to, and it wasn't a painful process to, to determine. But when I look at this grill from this manufacturer and I look at several grills, I start to see a very common theme. My AK factor for in this example right here, I have a 20 by 20 grill. So let's do a little bit of math up here. 20 by 20, 400 square inches divided by 144. It turned into square feet. Well, when I do my math and my AK, I'm look, I got a, a 0.667. And let's just be super generous and round that off to 70% free area. Hmm. Let's do another one. Well, this is the one that we just did with the 2.77 uh, for a 20 by 20. Here is another 20 by 20 coming from the same manufacturer. And it's a little bit different of a style, but we see AK factors that are well, under that 0.7 number, right? So that AK factor is the free area. The multiplier that I was using, my 80%, was, was suspect, no doubt. And I've been perpetuating that myth for, for quite a while. Now, in the grand scheme of things, am I close? Yeah. Uh, do I like being not precise? No. So what it really comes down to is we, we got to, you got to do the math, right? Rules, some rules of thumb might be bad, and my 80% there was in that category of not good. So when you do this, uh, keep this stuff in mind. If you've been doing this for a while and you're stuck on some of these numbers, open the book once in a while. Uh, I'm not afraid to acknowledge that sometimes I don't do the right thing, and apparently that 80% rule, well, maybe it was good at one time, but I'm looking stuff up from now on. And with that... We'll catch you next time.